Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brit Workshop. Uh, this is a continuation of the keyboard cabinet uh, build. And uh, we've already seen the building of the uh, main frame, which is just below me just here. Uh, and I've just finished the preparation of all the panelling. And I thought I should give you a quick rundown of how I went about that. Now, I cheated a bit, and <laughs> here's what I've done. The plywood I'm using is poplar plywood and it's 18 millimeters thick it's a fraction over actually but 18 mil thick uh, and it's quite light and so it's ideal uh, particularly uh, ideal for the the flap of the uh, cabinet now uh, i've made an allowance with all of this for edging of solid wood and this is the maple the same species that we'll be using for the veneer so when the veneer goes on you've got a nice uh, hard edge uh, to protect the veneer because this plywood actually isn't the, the strongest of materials now the, the wood i'm using for the edging is uh, obviously maple um, and i've made it about uh, just over 0.3 of a millimeter thicker than the plywood is uh, and I'm going to have to really uh, take care when I stick this on. And this way I've made it uh, 14 uh, millimetres. Now my rationale is as follows. Uh, I've oversized my plywood uh, such that uh, I'm going to lose 5 millimetres of edge all the way around. And the idea of that is that when you veneer the, the large flat pieces... Uh, you can have the veneer just overrunning the edge a bit. There'll be a bit of glue under there and so on. So you trim that five millimetres off uh, to get your finished size. So that would then leave about 10 millimetres of this hard edge left behind. And that's the first one done. Right, I've got the top. Uh, laid out here and uh, the back and it's laid out so that the insides are facing upwards so this is the inside of the back uh, it will have the two side pieces this is fixed to the frame uh, and this part and this part the top this is the main field area of the top and this is the flap that uh, would be uh, attached like so and uh, I haven't put the hardwood edging on yet and the reason for that is that I'm going to install uh, some LED lighting on the inner lip uh, of the, that part of the lid. So that when the lid is uh, open, uh, perhaps like so, um, and the keyboard is here, then there's uh, a light here which will shine down onto the music. And that, that light is going to be angled at 15 degrees. I've chosen Hayfully uh, components and I want to hide the cable. And uh, if you imagine, as I look at it, this is the left-hand side of the lid, left-hand side of the back and so on. Um, I'm going to have the cable running in a channel uh, along this edge. Uh, and I, that's why I need to do this process before uh, the edging strip goes on. Now, it's slightly complicated because if you imagine you're trying to uh, have uh, a cable which is buried in here, uh, somehow you've got to then join it to another piece but we've got to veneer this we've got to put edging on and so on so I'm going to need to have some sort of reservoir for a cable which is hidden inside here until such time as the veneering is done and it's all cut to size and then somehow I've got to be able to get at this and pull a bit out so that it can be joined to the other piece. I'm going to put a little fillet of wood in there with some glue after the cable's gone in uh, just to reinstate this edge. Now, although I was perfectly happy uh, putting on all the edge veneering uh, and the veneering for the frame, which you've seen already, uh, using just clamps and uh, blocks of wood here in the workshop, um, I was a, a little bit uh, nervous about even attempting uh, the large flat areas uh, of the uh, main panels. And so uh, I was very lucky, a friend of mine has a veneer press and he offered uh, to put uh, the, all the pieces through his veneer press uh, and then through his rather special sander. Uh, so I couldn't refuse an offer like that. And whilst I was there, he said, well, look, why don't I cut those mitres for you? And so uh, we did that on his very big table saw.
Now, all of my panels, before I started doing any of the veneer work, uh, were edged uh, with solid maple. And you can probably just about see uh, the solid maple here and through this cross section. I've got it along this edge, along that edge, and along that edge, which has been cut through the mitre. That way, it supports the veneer, the maple veneer, and that, as that edging is maple, uh, should there be any sort of uh, sanding through edges and so on, uh, it will only reveal more maple and it should be okay. Now, once the uh, solid maple edging has been uh, uh, put on and then flush cut, so it's completely in the plane of the original plywood, um, I then took it all to my friend's uh, workshop uh, and we put it through his uh, rather clever sanding machine. Uh, this sanding machine costs almost as much as my house uh, and uh, it can sense exactly uh, the, th the thickness of the material uh, and it can do all sorts. I don't think it makes tea though. Anyway, so we put all the uh, bare boards through there first. Then after that, uh, we then went over and uh, applied the, the glue and applied the veneer and then put it into the veneer press. And again, a, a rather splendid machine. Uh, I think the two of them, that veneer press and the sander, cost more than my house. Oh gosh, quite warm. Once that was done, I then brought all the pieces back to the workshop and I then uh, trimmed the edge of the veneer off uh, here uh, and then went back uh, to my friend's workshop to have the sanding then of the finished veneered uh, panels done. And as I said, when I was there, he said, well, would you like me to cut these biters for you? I said, oh, Yes, please. Uh, and I, I couldn't refuse that really kind offer because uh, with a, a super duper machine uh, like he has, um, you know, you're going to get some really, really good uh, finish. And uh, I'm really pleased with the result. This is the inside of the lid uh, and uh, there will be a, a piece coming up here which forms the uh, front flap. And so when the, the lid is up, uh, then you'll have uh, the music stand about there uh, and, and there if it's flat on the bench. I've got a wire which I've already found the end here which was uh, uh, hidden away up there. It goes along there uh, underneath uh, a bit of edging here across there underneath the edging here and it goes through a little turn here and there's a reservoir of about uh, 150 millimeters of wire uh, up in there. And I've now got to drill a hole in precisely the right position in order to extricate that uh, wire. I can see uh, a few things in there. Now it's a question of whether I can get the cable out. And I can see a bit of the red matchstick which I use to keep things tucked away, out of the way. Right, there's my piece of string. Now the theory is, if I pull on this, the cable should come out. And once I get it's, uh, the bend through the hole, it'll be much easier, because I can then just pull on the, the bit that's inside the reservoir. There's my cable, uh, now exposed. This is the uh, frame that goes around the top, and then the cover will go over here. Uh, and the corners are mitered. The other piece is just there, which will go here. Uh, now, there's no other jointing other than this face, which is going to be in contact with the other face there. And when the two bits are mitered together, uh, then the glue will be all that keeps it in one piece. Now, in order to do this type of glue up, one needs to uh, line the pieces of wood up so they're in a straight line. And I'm going to use my straight edge just to help me with that. Uh, and then uh, with the uh, might of faces going downwards into the bench, we're just going to overlap these two by about a millimetre. No more than that. And the idea is that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put tape, uh, uh, masking tape is what I'm going to use, across here. 
and that will keep the two pieces together and then when it's bent the, the tape will stretch and keep the, the pieces in the right position uh, as it closes up to do the, the glue job. Uh, that's the idea, uh, but as the tape stretches, so you need that extra millimetre uh, of meat so that uh, they're lined up properly. So I'm just going to get this lined up. So here we go. I'm going to start in the middle. Now I'm going to put a piece down here, and this will not only help to improve the strength of the union, the temporary union of these two pieces, but it will also help stop any glue from oozing out on this side. And now I'm going to move this to the end of my bench and let it drop down, like so. And, and there it is, as, as it uh, should be when it's finished. Now I'm just going to let that go back down very gently. And I can now apply the glue. Now you don't want to put too much glue, but you have to have enough. So you work that out whilst I do the gluing. So the glue is in, and I'm now just going to raise this up. And of course, uh, we've got to make sure it is absolutely square. All one has to do... Well, that's the second uh, bit of this one done. I'm now going to cut the uh, channel for the LED lighting, and the lighting is going to go into uh, this U-section channeling here, uh, which will have a little um, diffuser cover over it. Um, and that's about 18 millimetres wide. I've got an 18 millimetre cutter in the right, so I've made up a jig, uh, and uh, I've had a practice go. Now, the uh, slight complication here is that the... Uh, LED lighting has to be at an angle of 15 degrees, hence the, uh, the jig, and it's holding the router at that angle. And here's that uh, little sample piece of the channel. It'll go in like so. I've got uh, a slot that goes across here. Uh, and then there's a channel underneath the edging that goes under here. And then it goes across again in another channel under the, behind the edging. Uh, and then to a circular uh, place here. And from there, going in this direction, I created a reservoir into which this wire uh, sat whilst all the veneering was going on because there were no holes here and so on. And then I knew exactly where this place would be to drill. Um, and I drilled there, I was able to rescue uh, this uh, piece of wire. Um, and up here it was a similar case. I had a little reservoir about here, uh, which held uh, this short coil of wire, and I was able uh, to pull that through. Now, for this piece, I've got a hole that goes up uh, almost to the end to just here, and if I were to shove this through, you can see it goes all the way through to here. And this is a slot where the LED lighting is going to go. Now, uh, it would have been impossible for me to have a reservoir of wire in here during the veneering process long enough to go all the way through to this area here. And that's why I've now got to make a join. And that's what I'm about to do. And the way I'm going to do this is very simple. I'm going to solder two pieces of wire together uh, and then cover it in shrink wrap. And notice I've staggered the joints so that if there was any uh, risk of anything coming uh, through the insulation of the shrink wrap, uh, they would not be anywhere near each other. And that join will be buried in here. Right, that's those done. And now I'm just gonna move the shrink wrap down into position. That's that done, and now uh, when I'm ready, I can shove this wire through here, and then that uh, pair of joints will be hidden in there. Uh, now to start the glue-up process. So I'm going to get these 
uh, approximately lined up. I'm going to feed this cable through first. Well, this is uh, an exciting moment now. I'm just making sure I've got that so one millimeter overlap. Now, when it comes to uh, marking up for the dominoes, which are going to secure the U-shaped um, uh, part here to the frame below, uh, one's got to really take some care. And what I've done is I've set up some uh, odd pieces of wood here uh, at the back and at the other end, uh, which helps to line up uh, the U-shaped uh, cabinet part here uh, with the base. And so it's flush at the back, flush at this side, and the same at the other end. Uh, I've marked where my, I want my dominoes and I'm now going to use a square to make sure that my mark on the lower side of the shadow line is in exactly the same place as it is on the upper part of the shadow line. Now I'm using 5 by 30 dominoes and I'm using 5 along the back and 3 along each of the sides. I've set my domino up on the narrow cut my depth is 15, and uh, the uh, height here on this gauge is 13 and a half. And the reason for that is that I've got a gap here of 9 millimeters, uh, which forms the shadow gap. My material, which is sitting on top of here, is 18 millimeters thick. So therefore, there's only 9 millimeters of it uh, overlapping the actual surface of uh, the keyboard stand. And so therefore, uh, what I have to do is go halfway through the, the nine millimeters. That's uh, four and a half millimeters, plus the nine makes 13 and a half, hence 13 and a half here. Now, in order to make the domino machine a little more stable, uh, because of that shadow gap, I've installed uh, this uh, auxiliary fence here. Now, this may not be easy for you to see, but the space between the domino and the edge here, and the same at the other end, and actually technically along the back as well, is very small. And my worry is, is if I put glue in there and I push down on the domino, it may break uh, the edge which is here. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to reduce the size of my dominoes by giving them a light sand. I'm reducing them just on the, uh, the faces. And this is quite simple to do. It doesn't need an awful lot of work, but they've got to be able to fit freely in these holes. Now, as far as the dominoes go, I've not put any glue into the holes. I'm going to individually uh, glue the dominoes as they go in. And I'm only doing the bit that's going into the wood where I'm pushing them. And this way, there is a lot less chance of any hydraulic splitting of the wood. Well, that's all of that uh, securely in place. And I've also put the surrounds here and here uh, for the switch and the socket that I'm installing. So that's it for this video. But I thought I'd just whet your appetite with this. Uh, I need to have a, a music stand built into the uh, lid of the um, cabinet. And what I've done is I've used a technique which I saw in a video made by Fine Woodworking 
by a chap called Seth Rowland, uh, who uses a very special means of cutting uh, wood uh, from two directions, but not cutting all the way through. So you end up with this sort of floppy concertina, which is what this middle field bit is here. It's all one piece of wood still joined together. And I then set that in a frame, and that will be, uh, it'll have a, a bottom on it uh, to hold the music, uh, for the music to sit on, and this will hinge out uh, of the inner lid of the cabinet. So anyway, that's a sort of a wet your appetite, uh, and that will be shown in another video. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.